How can we make Allah love us more? How can we increase the love we have for our brothers and the love they have for us? If you want to know that, stay tuned. praise is due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is His servant and His messenger. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show. For the sake of Allah, I am Mu'tasim al Hamidi. We have the brothers with us today, Brother Muhammad and Brother Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are dealing with a beautiful subject that is prevalent in our lives and it's part of every person's life, it's part of every character. But we will know how to tackle this issue, how to deal with it and keep it under control so it doesn't affect and doesn't destroy the brotherhood that the Muslims have between them. As we said, brotherhood is one of the main objectives in Islam. To have this mutual love, to have the solidarity, to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this bond of brotherhood. Now we have, as human beings, naturally, since we were born, we enter some sort of competition mm -hmm. in everything Everything you do, that you'll, you'll see other people doing the same thing, exactly the same thing. Mm. There's always some kind of competition. Everyone wants to excel. Every, everyone wants to be the best mm. in some way or another. Mm. And this is what people do. There's a natural disposition in human beings to do the best or to be the best even. To be number one. <laughs> to be number one. That's it. To be number one. Human nature. Yeah. So, uh, do you recall, I want you to go back in time to your childhood. Mm. Do you have... Can you recall anything about competition? Just the, um, I can say the um, in a simple way, you know, the children they have this kind of yeah. competition, and sometimes it's innocent, yeah, it's it just is. innocent. Can you re recall yes. something from your childhood how you wanted always maybe in school or in the uh, playground or the football game to be the first or to be the best? Yeah, can you recall something, Abdul Rahman? Actually, uh, I recall uh, when I was a kid, like maybe two or three, uh, maybe like four years old. And uh, in the classroom, when we do like, uh, we had a homework, easy homework. Whoever gets the best grade, he gets candy and he gets... So I used to always like uh, try to get that. Yeah. And well, as, as a kid, I used to envy also when yeah. <laughs> someone else get it. I'll be like, why not me? Yeah. Was it to be number one or just because of the candy and the sweeties? <laughs> it, it's the both. <laughs> but mainly to, to eat. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it happened during school a lot. I yeah. remember uh, in primary school, a friend of mine who used to um, be like having uh, high grades in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, one time he didn't have this high grade he got, so he started crying. So it's like, uh, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You, have a, you still have a good grade. Yeah. yeah. This, this, uh, Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the things at yeah. school and maybe when you're playing you want to be the best yeah. and you know I can <laughs> remember when we were children and our parents were watching us we would say in our hearts can you see can you see me mom can you see mom yeah. can you see that move <laughs> I, was, I was the best you see <laughs> we have this want to be the best it's human nature yeah. there's nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't destroy the relationship of brotherhood Sure. this beautiful bond yeah. so we mm -hmm. have to keep it under control yes because it's human nature and had it not been for competition people would be lazy they would be lackadaisical and really with no ambition with nothing but competition always gives you energy and it makes people develop that's it, it yeah. gives you energy moves you forward and this mm -hmm. is actually this is one of the things that are, that have been exploited by the people of evil you know how they got for example they saw they talk about women rights they talk about liberation of women. Well, they use beautiful words, 
but their intentions are evil. They want to spread mischief. They want the women to get rid of their chastity, to do away with their hijab and with their modesty. They want women to become just sexual objects for men to enjoy. That's all. That's what they want with women. Mm -hmm. yeah. what for the media, see. for the advertisement. Yeah. And they say women rights, women rights, liberation for women, rights for women and all that. And you can look at the uh, women in the West. Well, I don't believe that, I mean, uh, having a naked wom woman or half a naked woman sitting on a chocolate bar in an advertisement and then will say this is wom women's rights. This is exploitation. Mm -hmm. This is really sick. And You're I, using it just to sell the, the yeah. product. Whatever you, whatever like you are product. selling, even if it's uh, uh, car tires, or even if it's a what hammer everything. that you are advertising, everything. what do they do? Well, they use a, a woman. That's exploitation. And this is moving also in, uh, not only in the West, it's, it's moving in the, in the Middle East and this uh, is my Arab point. countries. How did they get the people to do that? Through competition. Mm. They said, okay, look at that woman, she's more liberated than you. So they exploited that sense of competition that is deep in every soul in order to make, to direct the people in a certain direction. Competition. Mm -hmm. Competition. Yeah. And that was the same approach Shaitan used with Adam and Eve. Adam alayhi salam. How did he do that? He said to them, Allah did not prevent you to eat from that tree except that you become like him. Mm. Or you become immortal. Mm. Or in another verse, Illa an takuna malakain. He prevented you from eating from that tree because if you do that, you will become from the angels. So Adam, he had that sense of competition. He wanted to be like the angels. He wanted mm. to be immortal. Yeah. So he used, he exploited that sense of competition. You want to tease them to get to this act to uh, disobey Allah subhanahu That's wa ta'ala. So you see what how the approach of people who want to uh, destroy the modesty of women and the shyness and the mm. bashfulness. Mm. They say they approach the women of the Muslims. They say to you look at the woman in the West. She works. She has her own house. She does this. She does that. They try to make it beautify it. They, they even move the beauty competitions. To the to the Arab countries now it's it's it's, uh, it's the same as the uh, Western world. Yeah. How did they do that? They say Through it's competition, competition yeah. exploiting the sense of co it's a very important psychological thread using that sense of competition to exploit people. Yeah. They say, for example, you see the women in the West they're more liberated, they have more freedom, they have their own character, yeah. they ha they make their own decisions, and they they cover or they conceal the rest of the bad stuff, the evil stuff, the miserable life that women have in the West, subhanAllah. And that's the, that's the tricks of the media. They take a point and beautify it and make it big and they leave all the other bad points. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a, a thing that you can't realize, a competition. You think it's something good, but it turns out to be bad thing, evil thing. Yeah, the, 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 it's, it's, um, it's aiming to yeah. destroying uh, the whole societies. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, so it's deep in the human soul, that sense of competition. What can we do about it? Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that that sense of competition would destroy brotherhood? Have you come across something like that? Maybe I at school, to be the first in class, be number one, that caused hatred. You know, there's mm -hmm. always two or three students mm -hmm. who are competing to be number one. And when one of them doesn't come number one, you can see the hatred comes out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, sometimes there's hate and sometimes it even uh, uh, causes backstabbing. Yeah, it and brings a lot of evil. Yeah, yeah it brings. It you, you but can. first, it, it really destroys that love or friendship that we uh -huh. have. Sometimes students, they are friends, they're close friends, and they're the best in the class. But when one of them comes first, the second one... It's, like, it's even in, uh, like in sports. Like if, if someone's like uh, uh, a fan of a certain team and another uh, friend of his, uh, a fan of another team, mm -hmm. they get like, uh, they have disturbance in the, the relationship uh, between each other for uh, the uh, two yeah, teams. Yeah, and we see a lot of fights yeah. after football games, yeah, all that yes, because yes, of does. that sense of competition. People sometimes kill, uh, kill each other it happens, because yeah. of uh, a football match. <laughs> Subhanallah, you see? And it, even me, like personally, I was playing, I, I play basketball. So uh, we, we're doing this competition yeah. and we were playing a game and the coach is there to see, like, to choose, to select for, for the, the final, uh, the team, because we're a lot. So I was about to shoot 
and to score, the guy to prevent me, uh, he, he just pushed me. And I was in the air, so of course I fell down and I got injured. So that, that that's, I mean, it was, mm-hmm. it's because of competition, yeah. of course. Was it a practicing brothers environment or, uh, or like normal uh, Muslims? Yeah. No, no, it was a normal one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe that that's the And main he got main afraid from me, yeah. he ran away. Yeah. <laughs> Because okay. so I was angry. Yeah. So you see what the a sense of competition does yeah. to compete. And uh, even we know people, um, you know, in the hierarchy at work, they want to get promoted. Yes. They want to have a higher status. They would do anything to reach that. And they say, they have this expression, they will destroy anyone stopping in the way. Subhanallah. So <laughs> they will destroy your life, your career life. They will destroy your future just for the sake of getting promoted. So he says it out loud. Yeah, he, he, yeah. I'm going to destroy anything that stops me. Yeah? That's it. That's it. <laughs> so it's a sense of competition. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the companions that it is not poverty that I fear for you. I don't fear that you remain poor. There's mm. no problem with that. I don't fear poverty for you. But what I fear is that the pleasures of this life become available for you. And tuftah dunya alaykum. All the pleasures of this life are opened up for you. So you fatanafasuha kama tanafasuha. So you compete over that with one another as the nations that came before you did. So, so it destroys you as it destroyed them. It's okay? C- it's clearer uh, mm-hmm. since 1400 years ago. I mean, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported this 1400 mm-hmm. uh, years ago yeah. and it's happening uh, now. Yeah. He, so he, what he feared for his people, mm-hmm. for the Muslims is to that the, the pleasures of this life become available for them. Mm-hmm. So they start competing over that. So it destroys them. So we see that competition is very very destructive if we don't keep it under control mm. to a certain extent it is necessary for human survival yeah. for human advancement we need that in businesses and yeah in all aspects but to a yeah. certain extent to be moderate when it brings about hatred it destroys the brotherhood we don't want that and we many times we have seen brothers they had love for one another and they had the best of relationships as brothers loving one another for the sake of Allah but when, when competition took place between them it destroyed that they became the worst enemies the fiercest enemies to one another Allah. okay so this is how competition is yeah. a very serious issue and we have to tackle that uh, with a sense of understanding of its seriousness and how to use it in a good way in a good way so this is why the Prophet from it, from his wisdom he told us how to deal with it and he said what I fear for you is that you, you compete beat. over this life with mm-hmm. one another. This is where destruction comes. Poverty is even easier than that. Yeah. Poverty well, I, is easier. I have a question, Sheikh. For example, for instance, if my brother, he's in like kind of the same field and uh, we have to compete. It's the nature. We just have to. Mm-hmm. So how do I cure that, the fact that it could create hate between me and him? Yeah. Okay, the issue of competition is not an easy issue or uh, that we can deal with in a short time. Uh, inshallah, we will deal with your question and inshallah. some other ideas, but we will have to stop for a few minutes. And I say to our viewers, stay with us, we'll come back shortly, inshallah. Hoda TV would like to know what you think of our program. What do you like about Hoda TV? How can we improve? What are your favorite programs and why? Who are your favorite presenters? Let us know via email, Facebook or Twitter and then tune in to our new program, Viewers Pulse. We want to hear your opinions, so let us know. All of this and more in Viewers Pulse, only on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. So the issue of competition is a very important one. And as Muhammad, your question was about, you have a competition, a sense of competition with your brother. With the, as we said, competition, as long as it makes you better and it helps you improve yourself, improve those around you, there's no problem with that. But if it brings hatred, this is where you have to stop it. You have to control it. So if mm-hmm. it doesn't cause hatred and it doesn't cause envy, 
then there's no problem with it. It's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing as long as you keep it under control. Now, do you know what made the people in Mecca, the disbelievers, reject the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You know what they said to themselves? It came in some narrations. Yeah, sure. They said, "Well, this man is coming to t coming to take her over. He wants to take what leadership, leadership or kingship yeah. over Mecca. So that sense of competition prevented them from accepting the religion of Islam. So." Well, now it has exceeded the limits. Mm. Is it clear now, Abdul Rahman? You see how it works out? As mm. long as it doesn't make you do something evil, then it's okay. But when it starts to push you to lie, to cheat, to hate your brother, no, we don't want that. But, but if I'm obligated like, to stay in that field and he's in the, in, the comp like in the same field and we're competing, and he starts this, this, this atmosphere of hate that starts to get created but I have to stay in my field because this I do it for a living yeah. so w what do I do it has yeah. nothing to do with that actually you have to keep ha that love for him if he starts hatred then you keep giving him love mm. competition doesn't mean that you have to hate one another and the companions set the, be the best examples for us on that we know that Umar ibn Khattab and Abu Bakr they used to compete but they loved one another they mm. never hated one another mm. even one day Umar al-Khattab says that they used to search for anything good that they could do. And he said, one day I saw an old woman, she was blind, and she had no one to help her. So he said, I thought to myself, that's a good opportunity for me to do something good for the sake of Allah. So he went to her house in order to help her tidy up things, and he would clean the house. You see, Umar ibn Khattab, one of the great companions, he said he would sweep the house, clean it for her, and do all the cleaning, tidy up the house, because she was an old woman, uh, she was blind, yeah. and he would take care of her, and she w he would give her even some money to, I mean, spend on herself for her necessary needs. So he said, when I came to her house, and I said to her, uh, he, he called her as auntie or my mother, he said to her, I want to help you, and I want to do that. So when he entered her house, he said that it was tidy, and everything was clean, and everything is good. So he thought to himself, he said, that's really strange. This is an old woman and she's blind. She, she, she can't do that herself. Yeah. So he said, I wanted to see who was helping her. So he started watching and one day that he saw that Abu Bakr would go to her house, tidy up the house for her, clean it for her, and he would give her even some money. Yeah. SubhanAllah, Abu Bakr himself. <laughs> so, so they used to compete with one another to do good, but that never caused them hatred. No, never, no, never. Could, but it brought more love because it was for the sake of Allah. So as long as we keep our intention for Allah, it will increase love, mutual love. And we know the story about Umar al Khattab when he said, one day the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to give in charity, money in charity. So Umar said, I was happy because at that time I had some money. Yeah. So he came to the money he had, he split it into two halves. He brought half to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Prophet peace be upon him asked him he said what did you leave for your family he said oh I left for them the same as I brought I brought half and I left half for my oh, family so uh, Umar said to himself today I will excel I will do more than Abu Bakr I have more money now so I can do more than Abu Bakr came with some money yeah. so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked him he said yeah Abu Bakr what did you leave for your family he said I left for them Allah and his messenger he brought all the cash money he had all the cash money he had. So Umar al-Khattab said, I will never be able to, to surpass Abu Bakr or to do better than Abu Bakr. Mm. I can't excel. This, well, I can't compete with this man. But they were competing, you see? Yes. Mm -hmm. But never caused them hatred. So this is how we want our competition to be. In a good way. In yeah. A good way. And if we are inclined to this life and we compete over things from this life, well, hatred will come. Mm. But when you do things for the sake of Allah, you'll protect yourself from that hatred and uh, there's also this other point like there's a lot of psychologists and people of wisdom that say that and athletes that you, you should when you compete also you should compete with yourself if you always look at the person like for example when, when people are running racing each other if you start looking at the, the one you're racing you could fall down because if you compete with your own self you may win mm -hmm. so uh it's also competing with your own self, seeing every day, for example, did I get better in Islam, for example? Uh, do I do, do I pray nawafil more? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Do I do zakat more? Do I care for people more? Well, I want to ask Muhammad actually. What do you think that we should be competing in? Should we comp- be competing over wealth, over status, or there are other things that we should compete in? Well, uh, surely we should compete in uh, abadat, mm-hmm. like uh, doing uh, more salah, more zakah, more sadaqat. Uh, reading, uh, memorizing Quran, uh, 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 that kind of ibadat, it's, 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 and, uh, and it's a lot mm-hmm. more than what I said. So it's like uh, this is the best competition that we will have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we should we should compete in acts of worship, doing more acts of worship, uh, competing as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون, and in that let the competitors compete this is what the muslim competes in worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. praising him memorizing more quran doing more having more knowledge yeah as we see a beautiful example that we had at this time there were great scholars who died just maybe a few years ago we had for example sheikh ibn baz may allah have mercy upon him we had sheikh sheikh al albani sheikh al albani may allah have mercy upon him and sheikh ibn uthaymin may allah have mercy upon him they were competing in knowledge, but they had love for one another. Yes. And if yes. you uh, look at the way that they were talking about one another, that was a very high morality. Yes. And beautiful attitude and love for one another. Yes. You see, although despite the competition that they had in terms of knowledge, in terms of spreading knowledge and bringing the people to the straight path, to the same understand, sun, the understanding of the sunnah according to the early generations of Islam, they were upon that and they manifested and they introduced a beautiful example of competition mm. for the sake of mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even, wa ta'ala. even if they disagreed in certain manners, the, you could feel that the iman that the, they, they, they present the, the, the argument with each other uh, in between them. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it, it actually shows, mm-hmm. yani, subhanallah, it actually shows them the, these uh, three scholars how they uh, have the clear and pure competition between uh, each other. Yeah. And uh, there's even this hadith, but I don't re- really recall exactly how it is. You're gonna help me, Sheikh. Uh, the Prophet he uh-huh. talked about if people knew how much blessings do they get from uh, uh, praying in the first row in the masjid, they may even battle each other for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. compete really in a strong way for it. Well, that's another yes. beautiful example uh-huh. from yeah, the Sunnah, yeah. eh? is to compete to be in the first, first row. row. Okay, now the last row, subhanallah, this is another field of competition, competition as well. You know, something inevitable in competition, all those who compete, or mainly say most of them, who compete with one another, they have envy towards one another, mm. unless they have true brotherhood. If we have true brotherhood, there will be no place for envy, inshallah, mm-hmm. inshallah. because this competition is for the sake of Allah, it's not for the sake of wealth, not, not for the sake of this world. Yeah. So okay. it teaches uh, if 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 we competi- uh, compete in the f- for the sake of Allah, in a in a in the dunya matters, we'll be competing in in a legal, uh, as I can say it, legal way. Very good. The, the is for Allah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, like yeah. like uh, the business, yeah. uh, it's for the sake of Allah, and also I'm doing my living out of it. Mm. Cause, yeah, so cause make it easier. Muhammad, you yeah. mean that when people when they compete with uh, with one another, they do evil things to let the other person fail. Yeah, so in Islam there's no place for that. No, no. But that naturally happens, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. But uh, if, if you've been taught and raised upon the Quran and the Sunnah, you will reflect this in, 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 uh, in your life matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, the com- uh, uh, in the example we're talking about today, the competition. So you will be having a competition in the sake of Allah, even if you're doing, uh, as uh, Abdurrahman, Brother Abdurrahman said, uh, uh, things in, uh, in your work or something like that. You're competing with another man in your work so it will be in a legal yeah, way and it will be a fo- worship also to Allah yeah. because it's for the sake of Allah yeah. Yeah. it's not for the sake of just uh, it is yeah. Yeah. the yeah. pleasure of business and yeah. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلْ الْعَامِلُونَ when he said about the high position of the people of paradise yeah. for yeah. this let the people do actions yeah. it has a sense of competition in it okay for this I mean, let's compete with one another okay. and competition in Iman for example, in terms of seeking knowledge, when you, see that, when you see that there's competition between two people, it makes them uh, exert themselves more. Yeah. So they do more because yeah. they compete with one another. It helps. 
So it is an That's advantage. That's the best thing about competition. It is an advantage. It makes you thing. do more, so you progress more in whatever you're doing. Yeah, but we should keep it yeah. for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of competition. The reward exactly. will be the Jannah, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. Inshallah. So you see how Islam uh, has the potential to get in the natural dispositions that we have, the natural tenden tendency tendencies we have in our souls and uh, I mean in our nature. Islam has the ability to mold them and use them in the way that is best. Mm. Islam not, is not about, I mean, uh, changing your nature, I mean, or suppressing the person's efforts and potential. No, it's about molding one's character, improving it and directing it to that which is beneficial mm. for himself and for the rest of the people. Yeah. So this is one side of the beauty of Islam. See, competition is a good thing originally. But if it brings hatred and brings uh, envy and jealousy and evil characteristics, no, now it becomes evil. Now we took it to an extreme. Yes. Now we have to keep it under control and benefit from it and improve our lives with it and make it a means that will, inshallah, make us attain paradise. So Islam has the potential to improve our lives and we can see, mashallah, with everything we deal, we have a beautiful methodology to... Uh, develop ourselves, cultivate our character and improve it mm. and this is all from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. and we can do that, yeah. we can implement it, we can see what we have to do is something simple and easy and applicable we can act upon that in everyday life and this is our intention, this yeah. is what we want to do and this is what we want inshallah all the Muslims to, to attach their sights and their hearts to that objective inshallah. so that inshallah we will all be in paradise in the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and I say to our guests Jazakumullah khairan Barakallahu feekum and we say to our viewers Jazakumullah khairan for your patience and for staying with us and we say inshallah we will meet uh, on a different occasion to talk about issues that concern that concern brotherhood and inshallah we will benefit from them and I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh